You should just, you, you need to establish dominance. Yeah, yeah, I heard that about with like Yorkies that you need to establish your dominance because they're little puffballs. Yeah, you know when people go in, um, yeah, like into service to others, they change their names. Didn't and that what happened with Daniel? Because name change and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's so, a biblical so, thing. You go ahead, change. It's a their biblical name. thing. See, let them know. So yeah, something's different. I don't know. We can give it a try. Give it a try. Yeah. Change this name to like uh, Shark Bite. Shark Bite. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's that's not bad. Good. Yeah. Snake bite? Snake bite, yeah. Snake, just snake. Snake? Snake Plitzkin? It's pretty good. Yeah. Snake, snake Plitzkin. Kurt, I would go Kurt, with that. Kurt Russell would also be yeah. good. Hey, Kurt. Kurt, Kurt for short. Kurt, yeah. come I mean, on. Hey, here. man, I have a dog named Ricky Bobby, so. It's a good name. This is a solid name. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> welcome to the must listen to podcast of your, mine, and all generations to come. Whoa. That's right, folks. It's your two favorite facially blessed individuals, the two bearded preachers aiming to misbehave on this wonderful, wonderful evening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I got to tell you, Justin, that was that lead in was writing an awful lot of checks. And I hope that we can cash them. You know what I'm Listen, saying? Man. Listen, man. I'm all talk. I'm all talk. Your ego's writing checks. Your body can't cash. I don't know. My ego's writing checks. And all that needs to cash it is my voice. Oh. Okay? Oh. So you're saying that you're snapping necks and cashing checks, huh? That's right, son. <laughs> Drop this podcast like it's hot. Here we go. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm on with these podcasts. I'm making a lot of promises. Yeah, grand, grandiose promises, and very um, grand. You know, we're gonna we're gonna look back on this years later and go, man, it didn't work. Didn't totally didn't work. <laughs> or or we'll look back on it years later and say, you know what, we under promised and over delivered. That's a, that's a distinct possibility. That it is happen. It well, it's a very small possibility, but it's yeah. one I'm willing to gamble on. You're gonna you're gonna. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bet for it. I just want to bet everything I have on it. I think that, you know, I think that's a wise, wise decision. That's right. Always bet on black. A wise, sagely decision. Sagely? (laughs) Sage-like decision, wisdom that we should, we're going to over-deliver and under-promise. That's right. But at the same time, the promises are pretty big, so that would mean like the over-delivery was like just ginormous. Right. It's so, such a delivery that you're going to need two UPS trucks just to drop it off. Yeah, if not more. So You're going to need a pallet jack for this delivery, son. Definitely. Definitely pallet jack material. <laughs> I'm not going to know I'm not going to know what to do with it when we get it here, too. All right, right where are you going to where are you going to put all this? What are you going to do with this? I didn't even um, know I ordered this much. It's yeah. just a lot. It's yeah. so, so much. I said, I said a bundle. I said like a bundle. I didn't know a bundle was 500. Yeah. Have you? Go figure. Have, Go figure. Have you ever done that before? You ordered something, and then when it showed up, you're like, whoa. I did not think it was this big or this much or this serious. No. I have ordered stuff uh-huh. thinking it was bigger. And it comes and it's a fraction of the size, oh. like one fifth the size. I was like, "What the crap is this? That's no good. This is ridiculous." And so, like, I, that's that's happened to me before. It's ticked me off. I ordered so. Leia a treadmill for Christmas one year, mm-hmm. and it was it was a it was a pretty nice one, right? We still have it. Mm-hmm. I still get on it every once in a while. When I ordered it, I was like, "Okay, this one has good reviews. I'm just going to order it and have it delivered, no problem." Mm-hmm. I do that. And the thing shows up, and it weighs, like, more than 300 pounds. <laughs> that thing was a beast. It was huge. It just just massive. But you know what? Once you get it set up, it ain't moving around. It's not sliding around or nothing like that. It Sorry. is in place and practically immobile. It's so yep. big and heavy. That's one of them times, you know, you got something, and all of a sudden it gets there, and you're like, whoa. What did I do? That is bigger than I had anticipated, but we'll go ahead and work with it. <laughs> you gotta cut that part out. 
<laughs> you gotta cut that part out, but it was perfect. It was perfect okay. timing, right? Uh... <laughs> hey, it happens sometimes. It happens. Sometimes it happens. But anywho, so we're recovering from hurricanes up here. So if I'm a little tired or out of it for this podcast, just just throw something at me and wake me up. Cause you, you're recovering from it? Dude, you don't know, do you? You don't know. We got... Recovering from our hurricane. My town got slammed. I still got people in my church without power. Really? How many yeah, days? Man. Um, when did the hurricane come through? It came through Saturday. So from uh, Saturday till now. It wow. was it was serious. There's a ton of trees down. I got two down in my backyard that I'm really? gonna have to cut up and tear apart big trees. Big. It's gonna take me a minute wow. to get through them. But and it's better off than my guy's catty corner to me. The mm-hmm. house catty corner to me is it's got four huge pine trees laying over top of it hmm. just 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 lean on the bottom. house on the house yeah Ooh. and so what we what i was doing today was trying to help that family find a place to rent yeah. that's what that's what i did today and after we went and visited a house and let them look at it and everything then i would just went around and started visiting around people yeah. that's what i was doing yesterday too i was just visiting people and seeing what they needed mm-hmm. getting a list so that way the Mm-hmm. Men in the church be able to go out there and help out some of our, you know, less mobile members. Yeah, clean up their yards and get rid of their trees and stuff. Serious though, man. It was it was unexpected that it'd be destructive in Tattnall County, as our previous podcast can entail, and mm-hmm. let you know about. It. You go back and listen to that. We're making jokes about hurricanes, and now that's all I'm doing this week is visiting people and figuring out how I can help them get cleaned up or whatever yeah like literally like our like i like what i said was gonna happen with us actually mm-hmm. happened like nothing like you you want to know who got hit the worst <laughs> huh. here in us in in our church in our congregation who got the worst you me yeah it was me did your power go up okay ready for this yeah. hurricane i'm up till four in the morning to be safe yeah you know watching if we got to get the kids in you know, I'm watching the kids. Jonas is having like an allergic reaction to something, so his both his eyes are swelled shut. Oh no! And yeah, and so he's sleeping out on the couch with me, and I'm just sitting here watching uh, Luke Cage on Netflix. And yeah. Um, yeah, during the hurricane till four in the morning, everything is on, still power is going. It's like nothing. I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna go to sleep. And so I took to- Jonas out on the couch. Bay and Toby were sleeping in our bedroom. Yeah, and so Jonas, I think, was allergic to something in our bed. I think one of the dogs or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we go out and we're laying on the couch, and I just go to sleep. And I'm like four in the morning, I'm asleep. It it comes through. It's all done. I wake I wake up about nine thirty. So I go to bed at like four four thirty. Wake up at nine thirty. I'm like exhausted, but I'm like checking in on people. You know, I'm like I literally going through everybody in the congregation, checking in on their core group, and they're checking in there. And so. How's everybody doing? We're good. We're good. We're good. Good. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. And they're all like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I, I typed, I'm good. Like, you know, 75 times. Mm-hmm. Get done and sitting there and about, I go, I'm like, I'm going to go lay down in the bed. I'm so tired. Mm-hmm. About 11 o'clock, it's this loud bang. This loud bang happens and all the power goes out. Nice. Post hurricane. Loud bang. Post hurricane, power goes out. I like what in the world just happened. I look out the window in the backyard, and the neighbor's trees that were overgrown that I was cutting down. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His tree is like pushing into his power line. It's dropped it eight feet off the ground. That's uh kind of low. That's really low. It's kind of low. So I'm like, yeah. what the crap? And so we call it in and everything. I'm like, hey, there's a down power line in my backyard in my neighbor's backyard. Can you guys come out? And, you know, and they were they were really good. They they came out. Within an hour, power comes back on. Hey. It comes on. And we're like, yeah. And it goes, and it starts going off and on. I'm like, and I was like, it's kind of weird. And I'm like, well, the power's back on. Awesome. And I look out the back window, and we have all of our windows open, mm-hmm. um, like the, the blinds. Yeah. And I look out the backyard, and I see smoke billowing. 
And I, I, I go, grab the, grab the kids, grab the dogs, get out of the house right now. You know, and I go and I look out the back window and there are fires in my neighbor's tree and yard, like nice. everywhere. The, the power line is down and there's fire everywhere. And I'm like, get out of the house, this fire. His ha- and it's five feet from my house. Nice. Did you go put it out yourself? There's a down power line back there. Yeah. I'm not going back there. Okay. And so I'm like, dude, this, I can't go it back there. It seems pretty reasonable, down. actually. Yeah. So and so I go, weird. but I go to the, like, I'm running out there. Faye gets the dogs into the truck, gets mm-hmm. the boys into the truck, and she's getting ready to, like, kind of pull out. My neighbor, get in my the neighbor's truck, the, we're leaving. Get my neighbors on the other side of us. They, they're they running over. I'm running over. They're like, they start to run around the one side of the house, and I go to the front door, and I'm like banging on the front door. And the yeah. guy, this old elderly man, answers the door, and I go, Boss, your backyard is on fire. You need to get out of your house. And he's like, mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Your your backyard is on fire. It's almost at your house. You need to get out. Was anybody called 500? And I go, mm-hmm. What? I said, You mean 911? Whatever. Seriously. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, Whatever did you? Dude, and then he goes, then he asked me, again, did you call 500? I was like, no. We called 911. They're on their way. You know, Faye's on the phone with, you know, yeah. 911. They're sending the fire truck. And then OUC is actually back there. And yeah. those guys are actually stomping out the fire, putting out the fire and everything. Because mm-hmm. um, they basically turned on the power. Didn't yeah. realize. And I told them the power line was down. Didn't real. I guess they didn't realize. And it popped and it fell and <laughs> started everything on fire. Nice. And so, like, we get it all out, and and I look at the I look at the guy. I said, "Hey, uh, because he's elderly and has a guy that Moses yawn and trims his bushes." And I go, mm-hmm. "And this tree is so overgrown, like it's ridiculous." And and this is coming from a guy that lets everything in his house and yard overgrow. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, but let his it grow. Nat- natural ridiculous. Natural. I go, I go, hey, Bob. I say, hey, man, um, what's up with your yard guy? He goes, well, you know, he's been really busy lately. Mm-hmm. And I go, for the last four years? Because it's been about <laughs> four years since he's trimmed this. He goes, well, no, he'll do it. He'll do it. You know, he's done it before. I'm like, yeah, I know. Four years ago. <laughs> and he goes, I go, dude, you need to think about firing your lawn, man. He's like, what? You, you, what? You, you know, he, you, you, he's just like, you know, him hawing. I said, yeah. I said, dude, here's the deal. I'm probably going to do my, I'm going to see what I can do. I'm going to come up here, come out here and chop all this down. I said, and I'm not a yard guy or anything like that. So it ain't going to be pretty, but, <laughs> but it'll be five down. feet, five feet from my house. And I don't want this. I don't want to burn my house down and endanger my family. And he goes like this. No lie. So, uh, how much that going to cost me? And I go, nothing, dude, <laughs> dude, I'm not going to charge you for this. I think it would be best, safe for you, and safe for me and my family and our homes, if if we just get it taken care of. I'm going to try it, and, I, and I've been trying to do it this week, but I can't get any time to do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it this week. So I'm just going to do it. I'm not charging you anything. And he goes, okay, well, I'm going to go to the bar and get a few beers. Sounds nice. And I Sounds was like, like a pretty cool guy. I mean, he goes, I like to go to Beef O'Brady's. And they're the only ones that are open right now. And I like to drink a lot of beer there. <laughs> and uh, I like to drink a lot of beer. And uh, they, they serve food there too. But I just drink a lot of beer. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there going, man, you've been drinking. You are drunk as you can be right now. I'm thinking to myself, that this guy's drunk. And it's, yeah. I, don't, I don't care. Was he and drunk? then I see... I'm pretty sure, man. He yeah. he was just, and then he just, then he shuffles to his car, all drunk, gets in his yeah. car, drives off. OUC comes out to fix everything. Like seriously, they got to run a whole new line. The line was burnt down and everything. They're like, hey, is the yeah. uh, is the owner home? I said, I think he's at the bar. He's like, <laughs> he's like, looks at me. He's like, Ser- seriously? I said, yeah, man. He uh, he told me he was going to go get drunk, go to the bar and get drunk. He's like. Oh uh, well, you might want to tell him he needs to cut these trees down. I said, "Yeah, no, I know, we're on that." Yeah. So, <laughs> and then, and then, ready for this? Yeah. So that all happens, and right before, right before, like the OUC comes, so I get done talking to the old man, and I go to my house. Powers back off because of the fire and everything. Yeah. Powers back you know, off just on account of the fire, not on a big deal. Of the, on account of the fire, my my powers back off. 
mm-hmm. and then the boys come running into the house. Faye goes, I'm going to take the dogs out. I'm not going to take them outside because there's the down power line out, out there and I don't want like him to yeah. pee on a fence and then, zzz, you know, you know, um, you know, get Don't whiz cute. on the electric fence. Don't, That's- don't whiz on the electric <laughs> fence. It's a, so anyways, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. So she puts on a leash and takes off. What do you think Ricky does? Whizzes on Pull, the electric fence. Pulls out of the leash. Oh. <laughs> the dog has gotten out again. Nice. And I have to chase him three blocks. Okay. All right. Had I had my gun, I would have shot, shot him. him. I would have shot him. You would have shot him? He, it, like, I was, like, I, like my stress level went from, I'm real chill, hey, everything's good, to, there's a fire in the backyard, now the dog's running away, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go nuts right here. It went, like, <laughs> went, went, it went from nothing to just super stressful within, like, the span of less than an hour. And, like, Have so I'm literally. Have you come back down yet? No, I'm good Are you now. back down now? I'm back down, but, like, this dog. Back down. okay. Runs through our neighborhood, mm-hmm. pees on no less than 15 houses, it's and I'm chasing territory. after him. With a treat going, come on, Ricky Bobby, come on, come on. And then he starts dropping a deuce in somebody's yard. Yeah. And I'm like trying to, you know, just kind of, you know, like I'm trying to get to him to grab him while he's dropping it. Because I'm thinking this is my moment. Mm -hmm. I get within five feet. He runs again as fast as he could. (laughs) And he's fast. He's fast. Yes. Yes. And. It's a fast little dog. He he goes a street over and another block up, and that's when I finally catch him. He's lucky he didn't die. <laughs> oh so gosh. have you taken to carrying all the time now? So just in case it happens again, I might have to. Just, yeah, yeah, just shoot right. him. <laughs> here, Ricky Bobby. Here, here. So no, nah, I'm not carrying. All the time. So it's if just... you could hit Ricky Bobby with your handgun at like fifty feet, that'd be good shooting. It is. It is that good wouldn't shoot. be bad at I, all. I'd be impressed. I'm going next. I'm going to shoot next week. So we'll, I'll. Oh, okay. I'll get like a a silhouette of a of Ricky Bobby and I'll <laughs> see how I do. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's kind of it's funny. funny. Yeah. It's funny. You shouldn't shoot your dog if you can avoid it, but sometimes you just can't avoid it. Sometimes you just got to do it. It's yeah. no big deal. It's like old Yeller. He didn't have. You a had choice. to shoot like, old Yeller. Yeah, to shoot him. Yeah. He, he had the the rabies, right? Yeah, yeah. He had rabies. Gone rabid. There. Well, he if could've... you go rabid, you don't got a whole lot of choices left. You don't. One way isn't that what? Isn't that what happened to Cujo? Was Cujo a, a rabid dog? Is that what it was? I think so. It's been a while since I've seen Cujo. All I remember is they were hiding in the car, and the dog is outside of it, and it's scary or something. What kind of dog is Cujo? He's a Saint Bernard. Really? He's like Beethoven. Gosh. See, we grew up, we watched Beethoven growing up. So we don't think of St. Bernard's as scary. Everybody else does, though. Yeah, folks like 10 years older than us, they're terrified of St. Bernard's because they I grew thought, up watching Cujo. I thought Cujo was a totally different kind of dog. But they had to have a giant-sized dog. Yeah, yeah. He's just really big St. Bernard. That was the thing. Yeah. And, now there was I mean, a movie that followed it called Man's Best Friend, where it was a Rottweiler. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's like a science, like a genetically enhanced dog movie, though. He's like got the speed of a cheetah and the like velocity the, the, of a Wolverine, like the Bionic Man, but it's a dog. Yeah, yeah, so. Bionic Man, except it's a dog. Okay. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. If you're gonna make a super weapon, why not make it out of a dog? Makes perfect sense. Uh, no, not so much. No, I don't know. Yeah, well, you never, uh, think that. you never know how that's going to turn. I don't know how did how did man's best friend turn out? Um, I'm pretty sure he tried to kill everybody. Yeah, that's the whole thing about you know trying to do stuff like that. It ends up killing everybody. Like yeah, you make like a genetically enhanced shark. What happens? He floods um, the whole whole sea area and like eats everybody alive. And then Except for LL Cool J. <laughs> yeah, that was um, Deep Blue Sea, right? Yeah, man, that's a great movie. That's a fun one. That's a fun and, one. And, and LL Cool J uh, survives, and, and Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane and LL Cool J, the only two that survive. Go figure, right? Is that Thomas Jane? Yeah, it's Thomas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Thomas Jane. Nice. He's, yeah. Nice. Frank Castle, like a champ. He, yes, the first Frank Castle. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, in my opinion, the best Frank Castle. Other than other than the new Netflix Frank Castle, 
Oh yeah, because that's Shane from The Walking Dead. Yeah, that I've heard dude. it's pretty good. Oh, you haven't watched it? No. Daredevil season two? No, but I've heard it's really good. Why? Are you, what are you doing? I'm not watching. I'm there's a limited number amount of shows that I'm willing to spend my time watching, and you know, Daredevil ain't made the cut yet. Because I gotta dude. watch shows with Leia, and she's not interested in superhero stuff. So we watch shows like Supernatural or something like that, or funny. Dude, that shows show together. ended like six years ago. Supernatural. No, it's still on now. They're still making new ones. What? Season eleven just hit Netflix. Season twelve is coming out soon. I'm gonna have to if start it hasn't already the started. Beginning. Yeah, start it. Start it at the beginning. It's a great show. It's wonderful. I love it. Listen, you need to go and you need to watch Daredevil season one, Daredevil season two. Jessica Jones, and then Luke Cage. Look, I don't have that much time. You're saying I need to go spend, like, 40 hours. Martin. That's an entire work week watching Marvel shows. Mm-hmm. I don't have well, that I'm not time. saying do it in one week. I'm not saying do it in one week. When I'm am say, I going to hey. level my Diablo 2 uh, hammered in? When am I going to do that if I'm watching these shows? I can't do two things at once. I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> That's true. Just one. True. You're playing Diablo 3 right now? No, two. Diablo two. Why not three? School. Three's a really good one. Because I've already got two. I've got two. Leia started. Leia decided she was going to put it on her computer that she got and started playing. I figured, man, I'll make me a character too. So I'm making me a hammered in. Not very exciting, I know. You just throw the magical hammer and it hits everybody. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Watch Daredevil season one and Daredevil season two and Jessica Jones and Jessica Luke Cage. Jones and because Luke Cage listen, and listen, Agents of Shield and all of them together. Yeah, well, you don't have to watch them all right now. Like is the new Agents of Shield is good. Well, I heard that they got the uh, Ghost Rider. Yeah, the Ghost Rider. I was thinking yeah. Hellraiser for some reason, but I don't think he's Marvel. Yeah, not Marvel, mm. but pretty cool, but not Marvel. Not Marvel. Yeah. yeah. They're um, making all these horror movie TV shows that I'm interested in, but I don't have time to watch them. There's an Exorcist show on now. <sighs> Haven't started watching it yet. It's so scary looking. Yeah. I know it. It does. It does look scary. That's why I'm interested in it, but yeah. what are you going to do? Well, don't, I not watched enough the time other in the day. day. Did I watch something scary? Oh. Okay. All right. I, Faye and I were like, we want to watch something like, you know, something good, you know, something kind of a little scary and everything. And I Damien? heard. Damien? You watching Damien? No, no, listen, I like, I like, we like, like series and stuff like that, you know, yeah. like shows, Netflix shows and everything. So we were, we were like, we're looking online and they're like all these reviews for this show called Black Mirror. Have you ever heard of it? No. I think it's called Black Mirror. And it's, it's like a British show, but it's an anthology. So okay. every episode is a different Kind yeah. of show. It's like a Twilight Zone type thing. Yeah. And I'm like, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and watch this. I I have never regretted watching something more than <laughs> that right there. It's that, it's that good, huh? It's that. It's not scary. It's like the weirdest thing. The first episode. I like, I don't want to see the second episode. <laughs> like, even though I know it's going to be a different story, I don't want to see it because it was so weird and it, and it happened. And I was just like, what, what is, what is this? Like, I just, I didn't understand who came up with that. And I, I was like, it was such, like, it wasn't good. It was such trash. So you not, you don't recommend Black no, I don't even want to say what happened in it on the air because it was it's so disturbing. It it's yeah. not and it's not like I said, it's not scary, but it was like it was billed as like a scary kinda Were there clowns in the woods? No, no. no. I'd much really okay. rather have seen that. And so little oh, you know what happened? That's actually moderately interesting to me. So. Yeah, I was like, hey, let's go ahead and watch the season with you know, um of uh, what's it called? The one, the show you like, the horror show, American Horror. Oh, American let's Horror Story. Let's watch the Freak Show one. I said, well, let's watch Freak Show, American Horror Story. You don't want to start with that one. No lie. Season one. We flipped oh, to it's it. So good. 
No, season one's not good. It's so, so scary. I've been watching through it again. <laughs> why would you do that to yourself? Listen, like we we literally put we put we put it to the first episode mm-hmm. and go to hit play, but the opening scene is is the freaking clown. <laughs> you tw- twisty the clown? Yeah, twisty. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Twisty, twisty the clown. It's twisty a picture clown. of him, and Faye goes, "No, nope, I don't want to watch this." No, nope. like, me neither. Nope. Me neither. Hard Done. pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. <laughs> so then we go watch this other show, and I never regret it. I would rather watch Twisty the Clown. I realize cool. how scary it's going to be. It was just so. I I don't get it. Like I seriously don't get it. Even, it makes no sense. Even narrative is comforting in a way. So if they remove the narrative, if they remove the the idea of story, then the entire it's, thing is it's not. It's there. There is a story. It's just so bizarre that you're like, why? Why? What? What is, what is this? Like it seriously is very. It's it's the most disturbing thing, without it being overtly gory and scary and supernatural or satanic or it's just it's the weirdest i was just like all right this is stupid just i literally said be intrigued is, don't don't do i'm it, intrigued i might like have to watch me some black mirror now you're just gonna go this is stupid this is, is so it a, stupid is it an hour long yeah okay yeah watch daredevil dude watch daredevil because <laughs> that right there is fantastic you know, I've heard the, a lot of really good things okay, about Daredevil. The I've best heard thing here's the deal: the best thing about all of the Netflix new Marvel superhero things, the best thing about every single one of them is that you actually really like the bad guys. Like there are times where you're like, you feel for the bad guy, you feel for the kingpin. You're like, dude, I really like this guy. Like I could. I could hang out with the kingpin. I think we would be good friends. And then you see his back. He like he gives his backstory, and you're just like, "This is the reason why he's the way is is his father is horrible." <laughs> like we're talking dad fail of of like the century here, right here. <laughs> this is the example, you know. So you see that, and you're just like, "What in the world?" And then like, and then Jessica Jones. Okay, the bad guy in that is is one of the former uh, David Tennant. David Tennant. I don't know, you know who, who that, that is. is? No. Nah. D- one of the Doctor Who's. Oh, okay. All right. One, the the dark-haired one. The Doctor Who, dark-haired okay. one. All right. Fantastic Doctor Who. One of my favorites, okay? David Tennant is one of my favorite ones, okay? And he is the Purple Man. You know what the Purple Man does? He nah. makes you just from being around you like within a few feet of you or just by hearing his voice. I think it's just from hearing his voice. He can make you do whatever he wants you to do like he tells you what to do he's like you and know he hey did. punch yourself in the face and you punch yourself in the face yeah and it's 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 a great character why do they but call it, him the purple man uh in the comic books he had purple skin okay but in the in the show he, he was the purple man but he goes his real name is Kilgrave. yeah you know? okay and so but it's Kilgrave. Like, like seriously, like you genuinely like him. Like you're like, I really like this character. Well, I really then, like Doctor Who, so it would make sense that I'd like him. Yeah, but the character's really good and it's well done. And like you don't know, there's parts of it where you don't know if you should be rooting for the superhero or the villain. Mm-hmm. That's what's cool about all. Of them. Like I genuinely like it. There's a point where you're just like, you kind of want like. Jessica to like hang out with the purple man and be friends with him. You kind of want that. Like, hey, he's not that bad of a guy. He's not that bad. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He just told this person to kill you himself. But you know, the you kind of want to be friends with him. To do less punishing? Yeah. 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 Well, the Punisher is kind of hard to tell if he's a hero or a bad guy anyway. Yeah, that right. Yeah. That character it's was. Tight. That's it's amazing. Like when. Yeah, in the second call. season of, of Daredevil. Oh gosh, so good! You're just like, like they are like at each other the entire season. They're mm-hmm. delving the Punisher. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And so, you know, the, the the culmination of that was just epic. Such a great season. And then this last one, Luke Cage. Like I really liked it. I really like Luke Cage. It's a fantastic story. And the and one of the and the uh, again 
the the bad guy, Cottonmouth. That's his that's his name. Oh, I really liked him. I was like, I really I really like this guy. I want to hang out with Cottonmouth. He's horrible. He just shot that guy in the face. Horrible human being. But there's something about how they developed the character that goes, I really like him. I really, and it's weird. But at the same time, like, I like all the bad guys in WWE wrestling. I'm like a big fan of the bad guys. You Have know? you ever stopped to consider that maybe it's you? Maybe you're just a bad guy at heart. It's a possibility. Can I can I say I actually have considered that? Okay, I have yeah, I have considered that. Okay, but you I'm wish. gonna need you to watch all of these episodes to confirm it. Man, that's a lot of commitment. I think I mean, everybody wants you to see and experience Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage. You gotta watch uh, all. You can't watch. Listen, you can't watch Luke Cage before you watch Jessica Jones. You can watch. You can. You gotta watch Daredevil first. Then you can watch Jessica Jones, Daredevil around the same time. Luke Cage's yeah. last one. But you gotta watch it before March because that's when Iron Fist comes out. Iron Fist? He's like the Kung Fu guy. Danny right? Rand, yeah, Danny Rand. It's gonna be it's the they do the previews, I saw the previews, it looks pretty good. Yeah. It looks pretty solid. They're gonna do another season of Jessica Jones. I'll tell you I'll tell you something. If five people tell me on the Facebook uh, the Two Bearded Preachers Facebook page. Five people tell me I need to watch it. I'll watch it. All right. Everybody That's how it's going to that? cost, though. It costs five people telling five me. Five people, two which is Preachers nothing. Facebook page. Okay. All right. To, or at least on these posts like when that we that we share. Wherever, wherever it shows have to, up. Okay. Five. So it has to say you have to, you have to count it. five people. That This is what you say. Martin needs to watch the Marvel Netflix series. Yeah. All of them. I'll watch it. Five people. That's a big commitment. You're going to watch it anyways, but I don't know why don't know you're when. fighting it. Yeah, but you need to watch it. So it's good. A, it's a time constraint. I got other stuff that, is, like, the little bit of time where I'm able to watch stuff, I'm watching other things. Welcome to Intermission. To what point do you think, or to what degree, do you think preaching will follow the sort of TED Talk methodology? Oh, I think it's already, like, you mean just kind of their, what do you mean method? Like how they're just kind of stand up there talking and everything? And Well, TED Talks are very, very systematic in how they present information. Like if you see them, they're all, it, do, it doesn't matter whether it's a major TED event or a TEDx event, they all sort of follow the same sort of paradigm they're all about the same time they're all around you know like 13 to 19 oh, yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. or something like that yeah, yeah. they're always stand there they're they're always story driven they're mm-hmm. they include facts their movements are all pretty similar their intonation is a lot alike. They, yeah, they, their their movements are very short and, and honestly the thing is like i get that now because i have to do that like I don't move nowhere near as much as I used to because now I'm being video recorded. You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it does. You're it tied does. down. So, I have, so you have to learn how to, and like what I'm working on is I have to learn where I can go and what I can do and, mm-hmm. and how I can move, you know, like, and I use my hands a lot more, you know? You're using your hands more with the recording? Huh. Yes. Yes, I am. That's cool. Do you, so you started to shift your, your preaching? Based on what? Based on what you think of the recording or based on feedback you're well, getting about the recording? Um, what I think, because like I watch it and I'm all like, if, if I'm getting sick watching this, then, <laughs> yeah. Getting sick like how? Because like, it's moving it, around sick. too much? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's moving around too much and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, well, first of all. Like for me, like I follow kind of a, like a similar kind of like I, I have a certain amount of time that I plan on going. You do mm-hmm. that too. Oh yeah. Like we, it's we do that. Yeah. You know, I have my, my kind of basis for how I do it, you know, with, I, I do like an introduction. I do like, you know, some funny stuff and then I'll go more deep into scripture and then I, I do with a conclusion. So I like, I have that kind of method or formula right there, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, now with the recording, the video recording, 
and it being just one camera. Now, mind you, they don't ha- they can move more, but if you notice, right? Because they it's edit. not sharp. It's not sharp movement. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's very it's very you know smooth kind of very smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of them like because the the, the other thing too is that they're not old southern preachers baptist preachers that are jumping up and down and everything like that um <laughs> they're they're you know educators and and um, counselors and philosophers scientists, that, and, you know, scientists sort of yeah. yeah and so they're that you know maybe even talking isn't necessarily where they're gifted or passionate about so they are very and it's and every time like i watch them i go this is well done you know? yeah like I watch any like this one guy who uh, I was listening to a guy talk about depression. It was a a gay Jewish man talking about depression, and the mm-hmm. entire time he was very monotone. The entire time, but he was very good. Like I was like he he had me. He caught mm-hmm. my attention. You know, describing experiences, describing how to deal with it and stuff like. And I'm like, this guy's really good. And it's just it's just how he how well versed he was and then i think that's the key is is the well you know being well versed in what you know and what you're doing mm-hmm. so that it comes across as very genuine no and it doesn't have to be theatrics it doesn't necessarily have to be theatrics about it you know right. like i said it's not like a, a southern baptist preacher with a microphone in his hand and his skinny jeans jumping up and down on the stage <laughs> you know what i'm knocking you know who i'm knocking right now i know you love him we all know you love him you love his stupid, stupid hair and his stupid face and his stupid. Gosh, <laughs> you know what got me going? What? So I like, I'm like, I'm on Facebook and I'm looking up something on Facebook. I'm making sure like my videos are up and everything. Yeah. And I saw on someone's page a video shared of a, a Mr. Furtick. Yeah, you're a hero. And I, yeah, he's not right here. I can't see him. So I'm like, all right, let's see what he's doing. And it, it was actually a pretty good illustration. Like, it was a good illustration. Mm-hmm. But it was so theatrical. I was just like, it was just like, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's, like, you know how, like, you, you watch, like, those televangelists that are just, like, running around like crazy on a stage with a microphone in their hand. Yeah. They're just yeah. all like, Doo-doo-doo. That's how I do it. That's how I get down. No, it's not how you do it. I know that's not how you do it. Run back and forth a lot. Um, he a lot of flailing is, arm motions, and he's doing this, and I'm just going, I can't take it. I, I just want, <laughs> I just want to trip him. I just want to trip him. And then there's a point where he, like, and it's just his, his. He has a preacher voice, major preacher voice, where he's just like, he's doing the and and the Lord and and said and he said that and I did it and, he, and, he, and I'm just like, where he's doing it's like the da 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 da. It's that intonation that keeps going yeah, and going and he's that like staccato and you're just like kind of hit yeah i know what you're talking about yes yeah da, 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 da. and he said the lord and wants you too and you're just like what did he just say cuz i think he pretty much just said nothing but he said it really passionately <laughs> he said it really passionately just goes to show you you can fake passion and he jumped up and down like there was one point where he literally jumped up and down Mm-hmm. In place for like three minutes straight, as he was jumping yelling up and at down the top, place, he, yelling was, at the top of his lungs in his mic, with his stupid, perfectly trimmed beard, and his stupid hair, and his stupid skinny jeans, and his stupid good looks. I just wanted to punch him. I'm not convinced he's all that good looking, but that's just me. It's a good I, looking guy. I think I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, it's just <sighs> he needs to relax. On the whatever chemicals he's taking, he needs to relax what, on it a little what, bit. What chemical skills are you? What do you think he's? What do you think he's taking? He's, he needs to estrogen. Relax on it. Estrogen. He might be hitting up some of that HGH. You he think he's on steroids? Not steroids because he's not like super huge. But if he's you watch not. some of his early stuff, there's definite difference in the amount of bulk to the feller between stuff from six years ago and stuff from now. Really? Six years I, ago, the guy was pretty skinny, and he's now runt. he's starting to get kind of thick. And Jeez. you're either spending two hours at the gym every day, and I don't see how any professional can do that. Well, I mean, I'm sure professional athletes do that, but like professional ministers, I don't see how they can do that. Who's got time for that? Okay, I, I will. You know what? Here's what I've learned about 
anybody that's not you or I that are in huh. really large churches that are like lead pastors of like these ginormo churches. They just work all the time. Work, work, um, work. That's how you no, do it. No, they don't. No, work. They, all right. What are you talking about? They don't work all the time. It's like the opposite. Like they don't work as much as you and I. Like you and I work more and harder in a small church than a person of a thousand to fifteen hundred or two thousand per church. I don't know about that. I think so, dude. Because Maybe like, I know you like amounts. But you I don't know what? See why they would work it's, less? It's so different amounts. Sense. Like no, listen, listen. Like who? It was somebody. I can't remember who it was, but it was telling me he was a mega church pastor. And then he ended up leaving his church and he started a new one, a much smaller, much smaller, you know, like it was like a hundred to 150 people. Yeah. And, and he said, he, he said, and I quote, it was easier to be the lead pastor of a mega church because you had so many people doing everything else. All I had to do was walk in, preach a sermon and I'm done. That's literally all he had to do. And so like a Stephen Furtick, that better be a good, good sermon. It better I mean, it be. better be so. Well, I mean, so Stephen Furtick is, I think, is walking in, preaching a sermon, and, you know, he's he's, pro- he's probably writing some of it, but he's probably got a team that writes it for him, too. All right? He's probably got a whole group of people that writes it for him. All right? And then and then he preaches it, and then he goes out and work works out three to four <laughs> hours every single day. And then in between, writing his sermon, you know? I really, I genuinely think that's what he does. Hey, man, I don't know. I'm impressed. He's got some. He's he's had some nice muscle growth over time. You know, I don't yeah. know what to say. Maybe it's on that. Maybe he's on some sort of chemicals to help him grow. Maybe he just has a lot of free time, so he's able to hit the gym for two hours every day. I don't know anybody who's able to do that, but it's possible. I I've heard of it. I mean, I'm not saying he definitely is. Yeah, but. Uh, Chances are it's probably, it's probably just drugs. Is that what you're saying? I'm I'm just saying a little HGH man goes a long way. That's what I'm saying. How do you I, think how do you think Sylvester Stallone at sixty got so cut for Rocky Balboa? Mm-hmm. How do you think no, that you, happens? It doesn't just mm-hmm. happen. You get you get you, some of those magical yeah. shots put into you and you How do you think the rock it up? Like as busy as that guy is, like he's literally like making yeah. six movies at a time. Like he's constantly going. How does a guy like him maintain that his kind of manly body mass. figure, that yeah. kind of body mass, and that kind of you know definition? Yeah, he's got to be doing something. It's got to be, yeah, yeah. It's the magic. And HGH isn't steroids. It's something. It's perfectly legal. I I don't know. I don't Why aren't we on it then? It's a good question. Because I, I don't need to <laughs> I don't need to look like that. I can look like this and it's just fine. Would looking like that do anything for me? I mean, I don't know. M- it might. Might. I mean, it'd probably make me more vain, and I don't really need that. I'm vain. You enough already as got it is. plenty of vain. That's right. Vanity That's right. as it is. Vanity mm-hmm. vanity. Everything is vanity. Well, you've been preaching on it, so you know about it. <laughs> Should you do an intro? Don't stop saying crap like that. It's kind of getting depressing. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to Charlie Brown it. Yeah. <laughs> me, 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 me. Lucy so. always pulls the football out right before I kick right it. Right before I kick it. So no, I and think then like, she overcharges me for psychiatric advice. She's not uh, even licensed. Not even licensed. As a fact. Okay, back to the whole TED Talk thing. Like, right. 